Hi everyone, this is John Carlo. I hope you're all doing well during this time. Today I'm going to give a presentation on the history of the IC Percussion Studio. I'd like to give special thanks to Rose Steenstra, who actually compiled a lot of this information in her own portfolio in the summer of 2013. Also special thanks to Gordon Stout and William Uhas for allowing me to interview them on gaining information of the history. And also special thanks to Connor Alexander and Dr. Mike Trudell for the support and also answering some questions regarding the history as well. Before I begin, I'd just like to mention that the grouped years organized in this presentation are outlined by Rose Deenstra in her own portfolio of the IC Percussion Studio history. However, their period names are coined by myself from my own analysis and research. So we begin with 1892 to 1953. And actually, it wasn't until 1922 with the Patrick Conway's Military Band School merging with the Ithaca Conservatory uh, is where we start seeing a development of, the, of a music department. We start seeing saxophone professors, flute professors, brass professors. Yet, there is no official percussion department, studio, or professor. People who played percussion in the band were just considered solely drums. And this can be seen in a lot of the official documents and programs during that time. We then move towards the beginnings from 1953 to 1964. And this is because IC starts uh, to see their first official percussion professor, which is Warren F. Benson. He was also hired as a composition professor. Before IC, he was a graduate of the University of Michigan and in his junior year, became percussionist and timpanist of the Detroit Symphony Orchestra. After 1964, Benson continued as a composition professor at IC from 1964 to 1967. Then he taught composition at Eastman from 1967 to 1993, where he met many other percussionists, including Gordon Stout. Unfortunately, he passed away in 2005. Pictured as Warren Benson along with other music faculty in 1957, from the IC yearbook. So to get an idea of the percussion department during this time, uh, after my interview with William Uhas, I found out some information. And so I found out that there, uh, in the corner of Geneva and Seneca is right now St. Catherine's Greek Orthodox Church. Back then, that was just a building um, and slash church of offices and classrooms rehearsal space and that was where Warren F. Benson's office was. And just to quickly backtrack, that that um, area that I was just talking about, that's right next to Shortstop, if <laughs> a lot if any of you know where Shortstop is. So that is where Warren F. Benson's office was, like I was saying. And just to give you an idea what lesson percussion lessons were like with Warren F. Benson, Bill Uhas was mentioning that since there was not a lot of marimba repertoire the, on the marimba, they would just practice Bach, Telemann, Mozart. Um, they would listen to a lot of non-percussion music. And something that was very special to Billy Uhas is that he was more like he was more of a life coach and a mentor. And it was really interesting to know that because I feel like that still continues at the Ithaca College Percussion Department today. So now, pictured on this slide is the percussion ensemble. And it's, um, I found out that the Ithaca College Percussion Ensemble was the first touring percussion ensemble in the Eastern United States and the Second Worldwide. And because of Warren F. Benson's connection with the Slingerland Drum Company, the ensemble was used a lot in the advertisements of that company. The rehearsals of the percussion ensemble we're right here on the first floor of this building. Now this is Dewitt Park. This is the Boardman House that still exists today. And this is the Baptist Church that is still there today. This building does not exist anymore. So on certain days when the brass rehearsal would coincide with the percussion ensemble, the percussion students had to pack up some of the stuff, get their station wagon, and drive down two streets and set up in Warren Benson's like office and rehearsal area. And so it, that just amazes me. Like that all happened during class time. So that's just a little snippet of what the department was like back then. 
We then get into what I call the transition period. The reason is because in between seven years, the department had five different directors. As a result, the department and its growth remain stagnant and not much is known about the IC Percussion Studio during this transition period. The first was Terry Hulick. This was a logical inheritance of the percussion program from Warren Benson because he was a student of Warren Benson during his undergrad and came back in 1963 and started helping out with lessons and percussion ensemble. And here's a picture of his uh, yearbook picture. And he was director from 1964 to 1966. After came Paul Price from 1966 to 1967. He is considered the grandfather of the percussion ensemble idea and is his push for percussion ensemble led to the development and influence of the Marimba Masters and the East Mar Marimba Band, which Gordon was a part of. <clears throat> then came Robin Engelman from 1967 to 1968, who also studied with Warren Benson at Ithaca College. He is most famously known for being one of the founding members of Nexus. We then move to Jack Moore from 1968 to 1970. He was the principal percussionist for the Rochester Philharmonic for two seasons. Dan transitioned to the Philadelphia Chamber Orchestra afterwards. Lastly, we have Douglas Igglesrud from 1970 to 1971. He was a student of Coy Duff and was a timpani player for the Syracuse Symphony until 2005. After the transition period came what I call the growth decade. <clears throat> growth decade from 1971 to 1980. In 1971, I.C. hired William Uhas, a student of Warren Benson at Ithaca College. And fun fact, the two people in the final round to become the director at this time were Bill Uhas and Bob Becker, which is crazy to think about. I'd also like to point out that the percussion director position was strictly part-time from 1964 until 1973, which changed to full-time during Bill's time as a director. It is safe to point it is safe to say that Billy Uhas brought many new things into the studio. The first is the introduction of more percussion ensemble rehearsal time, which changed to eight hours a week of percussion ensemble, and that lasted until the mid nineteen nineties. Another big thing that Bill did was design the percussion practice rooms. The entire left side of the percussion alley was designed by him. The layout included three room practice rooms, which is like the cubby area, the timpani room, and a regular practice room in between those rooms for any other percussion practices. Juhas also designed the IR percussion closets. So essentially what I was told was that entire wall where, that, where the closets are was one big closet. There was no exit hallway between those closets. It was a, clo it was a closet, and before it was a closet, it was a classroom. Um, so yeah, he he got the permission to make it into a closet and he built the shelves and everything that we see there today, which is really interesting to know. So moving forward, he was also able to get his office moved to the second floor. Originally, the percussion office was the guest artist room on the side of Ford Hall, that little alley to get into Ford Hall. Lastly, he introduced the percussion ensemble to the contemporary genre bringing in pots, pans, flower pots, and etc. as percussion equipment. This was completely new for the percussion studio as it mainly played classical and rudimental percussion ensemble music. One of his most noteworthy students was Steve Matheson, who is currently the Binghamton principal timpanist. Lastly, I want to mention two interesting things. One is that he did one tour with the percussion ensemble around the upstate New York area, and also had some percussionists students play a concert with him in 1976 at Carnegie Rehearsal Recital, uh, Carnegie Recital Rehearsal Room that got a mention in the New York Times, which is how I found out about that. The second thing is that the hanger timpani that are currently in the presser closet were bought by him in 1978. I think it is safe to say Bill Uhas had a huge impact on the percussion department as we see it today. After Bill left in 1979, I.C. hired Gary Rockwell as the interim percussion director. He was a student of Warren Benson throughout high school, and during IC, he studied with Terry Hulick, Paul Price, Robin, Robin Engelman, and Jack Moore. One new and different teacher for every year of his undergrad, imagine that. 
Gary Rockwell is more famously known as a percussionist in the U.S. Army Band from 1969 to 1977. I decided to call the period from 1980 until 2019 the golden years of the IC Percussion Studio. My reasoning for this is because of the stability, constant growth of the percussion studio, and the 40-plus notable alumni during Gordon Stout's 39 years at the College. Gordon's first year as the director inherited around 11 students in the studio, which has grown to 30-plus students by his retirement. Gordon also had an impact on the percussion department. He was the one that increased the percussion alley to include the multiple percussion room, or some people call it the fish, the original drum set room, and the new drum set room. He also installed the first set of cubbies using wood from the old wooden base lockers. Eventually, the expansion and the new set of cubbies that we see today happened through the music facilities. Gordon also was the first percussion director to gain an adjunct faculty because of, this, because of the increase of the students, which we will cover later in the next slide. Gordon also bought the first drum set, congas, and Rosa xylophone for Ithaca College. Percussion ensemble during Gordon's time also changed from eight hours a week to four hours a week because of the addition of the wind ensemble in the 1990s. Gordon's office moved from the second floor to the new third floor office in 1999. Before moving to the larger office, the second floor office only obtained a marimba, a piano, a bookshelf, and a snare drum. All timpani lessons took place in the timpani practice room, which still remains true for adjunct faculty today. As mentioned before, the result of an increase of students in the percussion studio led to the addition of adjunct faculty. The first was Ted Rounds from 1985 to 1989, sorry, to 1995. During this time is when the percussion stumble split by year, meaning there was a freshman sophomore group and the junior senior group. This is also when lessons changed to freshmen studying with the director, sophomores studying with the adjunct faculty, and by their junior and senior year, they got to choose who they liked to study with. Ted Rounds later became the Kent State percussion director. After Ted, was Robert Bridge from 1995 to 2000. After I see, he became the director of percussion at Onondaga Community College. In 2000, Conrad became the new adjunct percussion faculty. It was during this time that the adjunct percussion faculty was given an office. Conrad's office was on the second floor until he moved to his current office on the first floor. Later on in 2011, Greg Evans was added as another adjunct percussion and jazz department faculty. He currently primarily teaches drum set and jazz studies. Both Conrad and Greg are still teaching at Ithaca College today. In the fall of 2019, Ithaca College welcomed their new percussion director, Dr. Mike Truesdell. I currently call this era the modern times. It is interesting to note that Dr. Truesdell is the first IC percussion director to have a DMA. Also, he is a graduate from Lawrence University, where he studied with Dane Richardson, a grad student of Gordon Stout. And he is also a graduate from Juilliard, where he received his master's and DMA. That concludes a run-through of the history of the Ithaca College Percussion Department. I hope you enjoyed learning about the family and connections in this studio. Thank you very much for your time. Have a good one.